Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati and today we're going to continue talking about what happened to the man who believes that vaccines cause autism. We've already talked about his history and what led him to making that statement, but we've still got a lot of dirt to dig up on Andrew Wakefield. If you haven't watched part one yet, I highly recommend that you do that first before continuing here. Also, considering that Wakefield has been sued for libel before, though he eventually dropped the charges or the charges fell through, I'm going to cover my ass here and say that this is my opinion. This video is my opinion that I've formed after hours of research and fact checking using reputable sources to do so. It's my opinion, okay? Are we good with that? Cool, all right, let's keep going. So after Wakefield made his statements, we know that ignorant parents desperate for answers started believing that it was vaccines that caused their child's autism. But hey, as long as there's a doctor somewhere, somehow backing up that statement, then it has to be true. Since Wakefield is from the UK, we actually saw some pretty nasty stuff coming out of London. In the year 2000, two years after Wakefield's claims, parents that blamed the MMR vaccine for triggering autism in their children started to take group action against vaccine manufacturers. I don't really have to explain myself how bad this is, but can you imagine what would have happened if they had succeeded? If these parents want vaccine manufacturers to stop providing a literal life-saving invaluable service to the rest of the population? And yes, their own ignorance, stubbornness, and need to place blame on someone or something for their child's autism is mostly to blame here. But Wakefield only fueled those fires with his study and he made them feel justified. And it's not, okay? That's plain and simple. This is not okay. If these parents spent the same amount of time and devotion working towards managing their child's lifestyle and needs and getting to understand them better, then yeah, I'm pretty sure that they would be much better off, the parent and child. But if you're diagnosed with some uncurable condition that apparently, you know, some people think is an absolute nightmare, that doesn't give you the right to blow up hospitals and blame the medical community at large, all right? So why does that even have to be said? Now, moving on, you might recognize this name from earlier in part one, Brian Deere. He's a UK reporter from Channel 4 who did heavy research into this situation. Needless to say, Wakefield didn't like him too much. In 2004, Brian Deere came out with a documentary entitled MMR, What They Didn't Tell You. Brian Deere has his own YouTube channel where he uploaded it, but Channel 4 and 2020 Productions were involved with the film as well. And I've got to tell you that I've seen a lot of documentaries doing research for these deep dives. The Netflix Betting on Zero for Herbalife, The Dark Side of Chocolate for Nestle, documentary series on the Hikikomori, and all the Goop episodes on Netflix, Blackfish for SeaWorld, there's a lot. And hey, I have found all of them to be informative to some degree or enjoyable or laughable in the case of Goop or plenty horrifying. But with this one, there was nothing funny. It was just horrifying, just bad. One of the opening lines from Dr. Wakefield himself. The MMR should be suspended in favor of the single vaccines. And yeah, that's how you know it's gonna be good. Especially when the next sentence is how they planned a rival vaccine. Andrew Wakefield is not anti-vax folks, he's anti-MMR. We are literally less than a minute and 20 seconds in and you hear, When Dr. Wakefield warned that MMR might lead to autism, his own laboratory had carried out tests on children that dramatically contradicted his claims. So we are in for a ride because Andrew fucking Wakefield himself is not even an anti-vaxxer. No, he wanted to make the whole world scared of the MMR vaccine so he could sell you his own vaccines instead. How fucked up is that? Now let it sink in for a second. This entire anti-vax movement is because one man, one despicable, pitiful excuse of a doctor thought that he would discredit the MMR vaccine because measles outbreaks all over the world spark an anti-vax movement just to sell his own vaccine for profit. And I'm not even joking with you, this is real. Anti-vaxxers act like all vaccines are terrible. They are literally putting their child's lives in danger and other children around them in danger. When the only fucking reason any of this happened in the first place is because Wakefield wanted to make money off of the fear. I am absolutely trying to keep myself composed right now, but when I found this out, I actually had to just sit there and stare at the documentary for quite a while, wondering how this could possibly be real. I don't even know if he actually believes the MMR vaccine causes autism, but his motivations have never been for people's well-being. It's been about money the whole time. And this sounds like a sick joke played on the entire world. 
but we are going to get a lot deeper into this, trust me, because as per usual, we have receipts. But for now, after that bombshell, let's get back to what the rest of this video had to say. Brian Deere visited a young child with autism, Rebecca, whose mother believes it was an MMR vaccine that caused her autism. She says that for her three-year-old, she just one day started behaving differently. Though at the very end of the documentary, she says she's mistaken and didn't realize Rebecca was actually showing signs sooner that she had dismissed. But Andrew Wakefield, of course, blames MMR. He says the vaccine shouldn't be all at once, but the risk is created from the combined vaccine. My opinion is that the risk is related to the combined vaccine, the MMR suspended in favor of the single vaccines. The single vaccines are likely in this context to be safer. Well, of course you'd say that, Wakefield. Of course you would, when that's exactly what you want to sell. And obviously, as you can guess, that's not how the news was presented. Instead, this was fear-mongering. This was the wariness of the MMR vaccine that Wakefield wanted. Wakefield also stated, mumps, measles, and rubella together might be too much for the immune system of some children to handle. And I'm sorry, but since when did that translate into autism? I get why, like, oh, it might make them feel a little sick because now you have a few flu-like symptoms from the flu shot, that drowsiness and achiness, not the flu itself, but yeah, you might feel a little bit weak for just a couple days. But a vaccine causing autism is beyond reaching. There's testing been done to see if autism is genetic and we're not sure 100% what causes it, but it does seem to be some promise in the genetic theory. So is Wakefield actually saying that vaccines could alter your genes? I can't even begin with how dumb that actually is. Brian had the most damning evidence I'd seen so far in about 10 minutes into this video. He says that nine months before the MMR announcement, Wakefield filed documents worldwide. Claiming to have discovered, firstly, their own allegedly safer vaccine against measles. And secondly, treatments perhaps even a complete cure for inflammatory bowel disease and autism. According to a molecular biologist, Ian Bruce, who Brian Deere showed the patents to, the patents the public weren't aware of. And he says, Well, it's something that I've never seen before, but uh, I mean, the interpretation of that is quite clear to me. And that is that they have a vaccine for measles, which presumably is an alternative to the existing vaccine. And as for the cures for the inflammatory bowel disease and autism? Yeah, I think it's fair to say that they're fairly enormous claims, if they're valid. I love that the biologist can't even keep a straight face here. Like, yeah, sure, okay, they've got a cure, all right. As for the money, it's as gigantic as expected. I mean, I think that the market for vaccines, especially globally applied vaccines, are obviously potentially enormous. And as for a cure for autism, the biologist says, I think that goes without saying. This is, without a doubt, something the public should have been made aware of. His findings weren't some careful result of a doctor who had no ulterior motives. No matter what an anti-vaxxer says, no matter how much I'm sure they'll try to insist that the results are the results and vaccines cause autism, but the fact remains that Wakefield was in it for his own profit. The next portion covered in the documentary focuses on the research behind his revolutionary vaccine that he made. And yet the process Wakefield goes through is convoluted to say the least. He injected mice with measles, extracted their white blood cells, freezes them, thaws them, mixes these with human cells and injected the stuff into pregnant goats. And I just, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I'm no scientist here, but that doesn't even sound right to me. Of course, Brian did get someone to go over this process, Professor Rick Blumberg, an immunologist. And guys, I know I said this whole documentary is horrifying. Believe me, it is. It's a great watch, but it is horrifying. But there was nothing funnier in the whole thing than seeing this man look over the research, take a deep breath and just go, I don't know what they're looking at. Brian asks, There's all this, uh, seem somewhat strange to you? Uh, in a word, yes. However, Wakefield didn't do this all alone. No, no, there was a joint inventor on these products, a man named Hugh Feudenberg, a former immunologist who has been long controversial. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit with the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic patients with blood products. Then in 1995, he was suspended from practicing medicine and made to pay a $10,000 fine for his misuse of prescribing controlled drugs. So 
what a great partner. That's someone I would definitely want involved in my measles vaccine. Sign me the fuck up. What am I even researching anymore? I just, uh, I need to go give Casper a hug. Where are you? Come here, Bean. Beanie. Yes, hello. Come here, please. Give mother the cuddles. She's dealing with stupid vaccine people. So it's all a lie. They put measles in a pregnant goat and his partner was suspended from practicing medicine after he had a lawsuit with the FDA for injecting autistic children with blood products. So, all right, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. And I'm not even halfway through this documentary. The fuckery goes so, so much deeper than I thought it would. So let's just keep moving, shall we? The patent was listed to Spartanburg and that's how this man was found, by the way. So this grandfather of the anti-vax movement, as he described, charges $150 an hour to treat autistic children, which, you know, is fucking ridiculous. But the cherry on top, the cherry on fucking top of this is when Brian asks him why he injected pregnant goats. Why out of everything did they follow this specific procedure? A procedure that they claim would create a new, safer version of a measles vaccine. So why did Dr. Feudenberg, why did you follow this revolutionary process? I don't know, it's just a wild idea, I guess. I'm gonna fucking lose it with these people. That's not how you create a vaccine. All right, immunologists and scientists and doctors and whoever you are, screw the fucking procedures. This guy just had a wild idea to fucking give a random vaccine to pregnant goats and voila, baby, here we go. It's cure time. Feudenberg says he doesn't want to be a part of the goat breast milk, whatever capsules anymore though, because according to him, he's made a better cure in his kitchen. Step aside, Jilly Juice. We've got vaccines being made on kitchen counters now. We've got the cure to autism in this guy's refrigerator. And I just, (laughs) you cannot tell me hearing that doesn't sound ridiculous. I just, I can't with them. But unfortunately enough, this insanity continues. Wakefield researched the potential link with measles and autism in a hospital setting by inserting tubes into, you know, places where the sun don't shine. Other doctors were concerned about the children going through these procedures and questions Wakefield's ethics. One said in a letter, I should add that in the past, I have voiced concerns on aspects of these studies. Another brought up that children can't consent to the invasive nature of these studies. And more still, nurses were leaving saying they don't like what's being done. It needed three people to hold these kids down in some cases just to have blood taken. I feel very sorry for the children who I feel were being abused. Yep because the torture of autistic children is always necessary when trying to treat them. God, does this man even have a soul at this point? I'm just really starting to question if some people can be born without souls and brains at this point. Now, Feudenberg isn't the only man Brian interviewed that worked alongside Wakefield though. Nick Chadwick was a PhD student while studying under Wakefield during the time of these experiments. He seemed to have good things to say at first saying, in terms of a leader, he's a very good person to to take charge of of a group. Nick's job at this time had been to test samples to see if MMR remained in the guts of children as Wakefield believed. He established a scientific system that would satisfy Wakefield and Pounder for testing, a technique so well received that it was even published. So armed with this knowledge, he goes and tests the children for measles. The problem, they never had it. Nick Chadwick says right there in black and white, no, these children never had measles. So an entire premise about measles staying in the gut gone out the window. Wakefield's own colleague, a man working just under him that has a method for finding measles worthy of being published, could not find a single case of measles in any of the children that were later reported in on the Lancet. And do you know why Wakefield? It's probably because they had the fucking vaccine. They didn't have measles. It wasn't in their gut. Get over it. You were wrong. Ding dong, you were wrong. Oh, and again, a fun little aside, they were doing lumbar punctures, which is an extremely painful process of removing a brain fluid from the spine. And guess what? There were no measles there either. Yet Wakefield's whole fucking theory depended on the MMR giving them measles and causing autism. I mean, Chadwick said he thought the theory just wasn't there, that the hypothesis wasn't correct, but Wakefield went back on supporting the same damn testing methods that he co-wrote and put his name on. This entire documentary so far has been one of the most teeth gnashing, infuriating reveal after just one after another, just angrier and angrier and angrier I got as I watched this. Normally, I just summarize the important portions of these things for you guys, but there was so much here, so many lies, so much bullshit from Wakefield, it just felt endless. 
His partner was a monster. The data was founded on a lie. They were abusing autistic children and Wakefield is just plain money hungry. Chadwick said he had hoped the ordeal when it hit the news would die its own death because there wasn't evidence. But here we are believing this study had in fact begun with a contract from a group of solicitors that were trying to sue MMR manufacturers. The damage was done. Parents were confused and the anti-vaxxer Karen was born. This confused parent trying to do her research is someone I can see in a slightly different light after this documentary. Now, I do feel like this woman still did an absolutely terrible job at her own research, considering none of this information was particularly hard for me to even find. And now with this documentary released, I feel like anti-vaxxers have even less of an excuse for the danger they're putting their child in. But back then, when the press conferences were made and Wakefield appeared so credible, I can sympathize with the confusion now. At least there's enough information out now and Dr. Wakefield's been proven wrong enough times that any anti-vaxxer in 2020 is an absolute whack job and hasn't done an ounce of credible research if they still believe his work. But in 1998, well, the conflicted feelings were real for a lot of parents. The documentary says in some areas of the UK, the MMR uptake fell as low as 50%. Even as of 2018 and 2019, 15 years after this was filmed, vaccine rates have continued to fall. Three states, Colorado 88.7, Kansas 89.1, and Idaho 89.5, have rates that have fallen below the 90% that scientists say renders populations particularly vulnerable to a measles outbreak. The documentary mentioned that yes, we do still see measles cases, even with high vaccination rates, but if a child isn't vaccinated, it can spread and it can be fatal much easier. And then come the outbreaks. We'll talk a bit more on that later, but for now, we're going to move on to Wakefield's response to everything. And to my viewers in the US, I'm sorry to report that Wakefield now spends most of his time in the States and working with the International Child Development Resource Center at the time of filming this documentary. They have a sister organization, the Good Doctor Foundation, and as Brian showed, they sell a hormone called secretin for autism. It's not sold for cheap either, by the way. Simply put, it's a lot of money for nothing. The parents of autistic children are a very vulnerable group that want to help their children. They want to find a solution. And a few pill bottles seems like an easy answer for many of them. These vulnerable parents go to conferences, look for answers, and unfortunately, it's people like Wakefield that are there, speaking at those events and undoubtedly spreading his misinformation. Brian Deere's report ends there, trying to speak to Wakefield at an event, but being refused an interview by the doctor. And this documentary was seriously incredible, horrifying, but credible. The amount of research that went to this is painfully obvious for anyone who's up for tearing their hair out for like 50 minutes, I say go for it. There was one person though who didn't like it so much. One, guess who? Wakefield attempted to sue Brian Deere, the reporter from Channel 4 News in London for the documentary. But as we know, you can't really sue someone for libel when they're telling the truth. Not to mention around the same time, Wakefield faced a disciplinary hearing before the General Medical Council. So while he's trying to complain about Brian slandering his name, the medical authorities are debating over taking away his license. Doesn't sound like someone with a good reputation to begin with. The libel action was eventually dropped in 2007. The Times reported, Dr. Andrew Wakefield, who sparked the controversy over the safety of the MMR vaccine, has dropped a two-year libel action against Channel 4 two weeks after a high court judge ordered the disclosure of confidential documents. The gastroenterologist caused a scare over the triple vaccine when he published research on links between the measles virus, autism, and bowel disease. He called for single vaccines to replace the MMR vaccine, which led to a drop in its uptake. Solicitors for the Medical Protection Society, which funded his libel claim, said that preparing for the case and a forthcoming GMC hearing would have placed an intolerable burden on him. Ah uh, yes, poor Mr. Wakefield, unable to face the prospects of two trials at the same time. One, because he didn't like what Channel 4 said about him, and the other hearing, because he has no ethics whatsoever and has proven himself to be an actual danger to society. But we can't have him facing such an intolerable burden. So as of July, 2007, the charges from the General Medical Council stated, this case lasted three years. As much as I'm going to try and keep all of this in chronological order, things might get a little messy, so please try and bear with me here. There's three years of pure chaos to go through here, and this is how we start. 
Andrew Wakefield, John Walker Smith, and Simon Murch are accused of carrying out research in the 1996-8 without proper ethical approval and of failing to carry out the research as described in the application to the Ethics Committee. The formal charges will not be released until the case starts on the 16th of July. But in a statement, the GMC said that the three researchers will also be accused of carrying out potentially harmful tests on the children that were not clinically indicated, including colonoscopies and lumbar punctures. In one case, the GMC will allege Dr. Wakefield and Professor Walker Smith administered a purportedly therapeutic substance to a child for experimental reasons prior to obtaining information about the safety of the substance. On another occasion, Dr. Wakefield allegedly took blood from children at a birthday party to use for research purposes without ethics committee approval in an inappropriate social setting and whilst offering financial inducement. Dr. Wakefield also faces charges in relation to a research grant he'd received from the Legal Aid Board to investigate a possible link between the MMR vaccine and autism on behalf of parents involved in litigation. He failed to declare his funding to The Lancet. When the payment was exposed by the Sunday Times newspaper in an investigation in February, 2004, The Lancet's editor, Richard Horton, declared it a fatal conflict of interest. And this has never been a more perfect time to say yikes on trikes. The fatal conflict of interest is one thing. It's unethical, greedy, shady, whatever you wanna call it. But I need to know when the fuck has it ever been appropriate, ever? to draw blood from children at a fucking birthday party. Like, uh, how do you sleep at night? Who goes to a child's birthday party and decides, you know, this would be a great time to collect some samples. It's so inhuman. This is someone who does not care about a child's well-being or best interest. How could he then take this kind of action and then claim that he's trying to protect children when in reality, as we stated earlier, he was just trying to push his own vaccines for profit. And in the case anyone possibly needed any more proof of this, during the hearings in 2008, a letter came out where Wakefield told his colleague, John Walker Smith, if these diseases are found to be linked to the MMR vaccine, these children are the few unfortunate who have been sacrificed to protect the majority. Wakefield was prepared for these children, these innocent autistic young children and infants to be sacrificed under his care, his experiments, for the sake of protecting the majority, as he says. That sounds like a fucking supervillain. This all sounds like a terrible movie, like this cannot be real, but it is. So to see anti-vaxxers reference this research, this same man, and this is what they use as a reason when they say their children should not be vaccinated? I just, I just gotta wonder, do you even love your child at this point? That same year, in 2018, Wakefield admitted that he fabricated events when he took blood samples. He told his audience at a meeting of parents of autistic children how the children would vomit and faint after giving blood. Why he told this, I'm not entirely sure, but none of it was real. It was just a quip, just a story. The way these stories are told, if the audience responds, you tend to respond back. So the story was told, but it had no bearing on the truth at all. Clearly, if it had caused any distress, then I am extremely sorry for that, said Dr. Wakefield. That wasn't my intention. He added that he had been naive to think he could take the samples without permission of an ethics committee. And this is more than naive. This is lying to your audience, the people that believe you, trust you, and are looking to you for answers as a medical professional. Lying about kids vomiting and fainting after giving blood is the least of his crimes here, honestly, even though this is something I'd normally get upset about. A doctor saying he has a cure for autism, lying to the faces of parents of autistic children, that's disgusting. But here, it somehow pales in comparison to the other horrors and crimes he's committed. The General Medical Council eventually came to its findings in their longest hearing yet after over 200 days. It's not as if they met every single day over those three years, but just so you know. The charge sheet is lengthy and I'm talking 143 pages. But if you go over to page seven, he was found proved of being in breach of duty when managing finances to ensure that the funds are used for the purpose for which they were intended. Page eight, found proved of being responsible for two out of the three aspects for arranging these traumatic tests on children. It wasn't proved to their satisfaction that he arranged for the lumbar punctures, though he was proved to be aware of them. Page 16, proved for causing children to undergo those tests. Page 23, found proved of having no ethics committee approval. 
Page 39 found proof that child seven had not even been diagnosed with a disintegrative disorder. Page 46 found that the Lancet paper was irresponsible, misleading, and contrary to his duty to ensure that the information was accurate. The amount of times I've read found proved under these serious career ending allegations is beyond insane. And the very few times it said not proven, it's not even a case of, oh, he's innocent of this, but rather we want more evidence to support this. Needless to say, he was found guilty of serious professional misconduct and struck from the medical register. Thank God. Wakefield had the nerve to claim, it seemed to me that they had come to this decision a long time ago, long before the evidence was fairly heard. This is the way the system deals with dissent. You isolate, discredit, and provide an example to other doctors and scientists not to get involved with this kind of thing. That is examining questions of vaccine safety. And no, they didn't. That's why this case was in fact their longest one yet, over the span of three whole years and 217 days. If the GMC had come to their decision before the hearing of all the evidence, then why bother listening to Wakefield at all? Proving him wrong was a black and white matter. It's not as if anyone with half a brain would think that child abuse is okay under any circumstance. But the reason this took so long from what I've read is because the GMC wanted to do their due diligence, prove every point to their satisfaction and cover their butts if they questioned as to why Wakefield was taken off the registry. But here he is acting as if he didn't even get a fair hearing. But as we've said, the damage was done already. Even if Wakefield was discredited, his followers and the anti-vax movement took off. The National Center for Biotechnology Information wrote, during January, 2019, a measles outbreak in Clark County, Washington in the United States infected 72 people, 53 of whom were children aged between one to 10 years. This prompted the governor to declare a state of emergency. Though once eliminated, measles outbreaks are becoming increasingly common. Since 2014, public health officials have observed an increase in vaccine opposition throughout the United States, primarily concentrated in major metropolitan areas. But that's just a recent outbreak. There's been many more. We've seen NYC become an epicenter for the beer and the measles outbreaks too, and are typically happening within New York state. So despite having a high vaccination rate, they also have an enormous population. 73% of the cases were linked to recent outbreaks in New York, and the majority of cases were among the unvaccinated. Two years ago, the CDC reported, the US experienced 17 outbreaks in 2018. These outbreaks in New York State, New York City, and New Jersey respectively contributed to most of the cases. Cases in those states occurred primarily among unvaccinated people in Orthodox Jewish communities. These outbreaks were associated with travelers who brought measles back from Israel, where a large outbreak is occurring. 82 people brought measles to the US from other countries in 2018. In 2015, the United States experienced a large 147 cases, multi-state measles outbreak linked to an amusement park in California, Disney. The outbreak likely started from a traveler who became infected overseas with measles, then visited the amusement park while infectious. However, no source was identified. Analysis by CDC scientists showed that the measles virus type in this outbreak, B3, was identical to the virus type that had caused the large measles outbreak in the Philippines in 2014. Then several years before that, in 2011, more than 30 countries in the WHO European region reported an increase in measles and France was experiencing a large outbreak. These led to a large number of importations 80 that year. Most of the cases that were brought to the US in 2011 came from France. There have been outbreaks around the world every single year. I just don't want to bore you with the numbers, but the fact is, is we're starting to go backwards. The US numbers in 2019 totaled the highest annual number of cases since 1992. Measles was declared eliminated in the year 2000 and we need to keep it that way, but these anti-vaxxers just can't seem to think that that's okay or respectable or like something we should do. I just, I'm losing brain cells trying to figure out why. So this year for many countries, it could be rough for other reasons. The New York Times reports, more than 100 million children could be at risk for measles because countries around the world are suspending national immunization programs in order to reduce the risk of the Voldemort infection, international public health leaders warned on Monday. So far, 24 low and middle income countries, including Mexico, Nigeria, Cambodia, have paused or postponed such programs according to the Measles and Rubella Initiative a consortium whose members include UNICEF, the American Red Cross, the World Health Organization, and the United Nations Foundations and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. 
Unlike wealthier countries where parents typically make appointments to follow a routine vaccine schedule at clinics or private pediatric practices, these countries inoculate large numbers of infants and children in communal settings like marketplaces, schools, churches, and mosques. And this year could be tough, we can't know. Maybe with people staying home, it won't be. As long as they get vaccinated right away when things reopen, I have no idea. Times are uncertain. And I can understand why poorer countries may face these outbreaks when clinics are closed. It's a privilege that we have that these vaccines are readily available to us and absolutely shameful and ignorant when we don't take advantage of that privilege. Despite the outbreaks, despite the obvious consequences this has had on the world, idiocracy spreads as fast as measles. In 2012, the anti-vax movement won an astonishing battle. A decision of the Court of Justice of Rimini in March, 2012, that awarded vaccine injury compensation for a case of autism has been indicated as a probable trigger event leading to a reduction of vaccine confidence in Italy. Now, Italy, darling, I must ask, what the fuck? A court of law made that decision, yes. A child in Italy got autism from the MMR vaccine. Like, are you kidding me? There's just so much evidence, so, so much evidence, so many documents out there at this time. Wakefield has already been taken off the GMC register and yet the delusion was so great that Italy gave the anti-vaxxers a heap of ammunition to use. Because now you better believe that any anti-vaxxing Facebook carrot is going to say, but there's proof. Look, a court of justice said so. Who the fuck can we trust now if a court of justice is making such a careless decision? None of the regions in Italy at the time even had a 95% vaccination rate, just coverage target. Their vaccine rates had gone down, so they came out and made these ridiculous, ill-informed choices that will only make their problem worse. So I'm so sorry to any of my Italian viewers out there, but Italy, what the flippin' fuck? As if this public confidence had not been bad enough, Wakefield made his own film in 2016, and it's a propaganda film you probably have heard of. Basically, vaxxed. However, we are gonna have to save that wild ride for part three. I want to be able to go through vaxxed carefully rather than give one or two paragraph summaries here, and there's still plenty to be said about Wakefield in recent years. So this is where I'm going to end part two. In part three, we'll talk about the past five years a bit more, the documentary, of course, and sort of finish things up. I hope you've been enjoying this short little mini series. Please like the video if you have, subscribe if you're new, and feel free to send this to that one aunt on Facebook that you have that still insists that vaccines do in fact cause autism. If you want more content from me, you can pop open my description box. You're gonna find links to my Discord server, all of my social media, second channels I'm involved with, yada, yada, yada. The list goes on. Everything's in that description box, as well as my sources, which you'll probably wanna look at. But until the next video, that's all for now. I love you guys and I'll see you later. Bye.